my name's Optimus. And, and I am Rags. <coughs> Many of us spend a great amount of time surfing the internet, so as a PSA, did you know that you can press your middle mouse button on links to automatically open them up in a new tab? Because I met a guy the other day who didn't know that, and I couldn't imagine what kind of shallow, sterile, joyless existence he must have lived until I told him. Now, that didn't have anything to do with the video, I just thought I'd throw that out there. I'm sure there's some of you now randomly middle mouse clicking on everything on this page just to see the tabs line up. But what I don't keep tabs on myself is for YouTube. Ha! Segue! And I honestly can't quite remember how this video even appeared on my radar, but I gave it a watch, and it was terrible. So, here we are, back in the proverbial saddle. If TikTok is anything to go by- Now, I don't really keep up with the TikTok, or whatever the kids do these days on their phone machines, but this video isn't really about the meme war itself that happened on TikTok. It's more about the commentary comparing the two. So don't worry if you're out of the loop, because I am too. There seems to be quite a discourse between furries and gamers, which is actually a little bit strange considering how alike we are in some ways. Yeah, it's weird. It's like comparing garage door salesmen and clarinet enthusiasts. Speaking of things that make noise, is that a voice you're doing? Is that like an accent? Is that your, your doggy voice for your fursona? But fuck it. Let's pit the two communities together and see how we whack up. Wait, did you say whack up? I mean, when it comes to furries and gamers, I'm not gonna go out on a limb to guess who does the most whacking. And just so we don't look completely fucking biased by putting a furry face to both sides of the argument, I'll be here to try and give the fairest shape possible to the gamers. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it, but we know you're the same person, so I don't know why you bothered, really. But, I mean, hey, you tried. In any event, we have the admission that you will attempt to be as fair and unbiased as possible. So I will hold you to that. I am curious indeed of how you decide to compare furries and gamers. And I am certain you will do your best. Well, as fair as uh, I could muster. Artemis has selected to separate different sections of his video through the use of these categories like reputation in society. So, my dearest viewers, with big brains and very thick penises and shapely breasts and noses that aren't either too big or too small, let's say that you are going to compare contrast gamers and furries. What categories would you use? Perhaps think about it for just a moment. Alright class, time is up. Pencils down. I'm sure you all came up with some amazing ideas, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. I am certain that all of the categories that you thought of and the time allotted are probably far better than the ones used in this video. But in any event, you might be looking at this still behind me right now and saying to yourself, well, obviously furries are more hated. In fact, I wouldn't even say it's close. I would say that most things actually have a far better reputation than furries do, like testicular cancer or Auschwitz. In an instant, surely most of you, even those amongst you in the audience who are furries yourselves, understand that to be a furry is to accept the burden of poor optics by the broader society at large. The fursecution is indeed real. Okay, right off the bat, we've got a big one. It is the way we are perceived from the outside, the way society looks at us and what they think. And honestly, with furries, it's kind of a mixed bag. Oh god, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Don't be so charitable. If it's not overwhelmingly negative, it is very much mostly negative. Now, this, I assume, isn't asking whether or not the positivity nor negativity that's associated with furries is justified or not. That would be its own adventure. So what I did was go to Discord and such and message all of the furries that I knew of. So talking to people who are on the inside of the community. And I got a fairly consistent return on my inquiry as to whether furries were received more positively or negatively. The general answer was that it was negative, but there was a great deal of caveats that were thrown into it. And honestly, I think that part of things is pretty reasonable. Furries aren't even really a community in a sense. It's a very loose collection of people who share a particular common interest. And Lord knows that furries can be incredibly tribalistic and standoffish towards other furries, often for political reasons. 
Hell, you, you guys remember a while back when the popular furry YouTuber Majira Strawberry was asked to appear on the H3H3 podcast? He was bombarded by countless hateful and harassing messages on Twitter about it from other furries. Many furries don't like Ethan. One of the reasons is because he tells jokes, and sometimes those jokes offend them. So Ethan's clearly a bad person, and he has a terrible audience. So of course the best action is to bully the popular 200k sub furry into backing down from potentially giving the furry fandom good publicity. And by all accounts, Majira seems to be a very kind and selfless person. At least this seems to be the general consensus from all of the videos that I watched about the controversy. Many, many furries out there believe that Majira is probably the best representative of a sort that they could have had. Hell, there have been artists who have declined to do work for me personally merely because they heard some things about me. Oh, but you can bet they wouldn't clarify what those things were or who told them, and of course they wouldn't even discuss with me any of the potential issues they had. Furries continually put out an incredibly toxic and often very leftist vibe that many find polarizing and insufferable. But we'll get to that later, don't you worry. So after that, I went to Discord and I asked in multiple servers the question openly, do you think that furries have a mostly positive or a mostly negative perception in society? Overwhelmingly, the answers were negative, with a few neutrals and many people don't even know what furries are thrown into the mix. And these people who were on the inside that I talked to were, I mean, I'm, this isn't just random people. I went to some fairly big names. You make some connections eventually. But both from the outside and from the inside, it does seem like the public perception of furries is very negative. Maybe improving over time. And the negativity isn't necessarily justified. But I do think there are positive aspects to furries. Sure, why not? But I think that reputation in society is probably not going to be something that furries are going to come out on top with. I mean, on the one poor, people like to tear us down as if we're a degraded bunch of dog fuckers. Uh, gee, why would anybody think that? I mean, no doubt you know why this perception exists. I mean, it was you who retweeted someone saying, if you think Kiro did nothing wrong, get the fuck out of my followers list. Hell, it was even you who retweeted, Zoophilia is a much bigger problem in furry than I think any of us want to admit. And this isn't anything against Artemis, just saying that we both know why people have that perception. Sat in our parents' basement, wanking over Nick Wilde. Yeah, Nick Wilde is an extremely popular character within furry circles, and even in the normie mainstream. As a protagonist of the hugely popular Zootopia film, even non-furries identify him in a moment. Hell, I haven't even seen Zootopia. Shocking, I know, but I know who he is. I mean, I couldn't count how many artistic renditions of his asshole I've run across. I don't pay it too much mind, though. I'm far more interested in those tiger strippers. As for the whole basement-dwelling stereotype, well... Look, I, I, I hate to be that guy, but we are talking about perceptions here, and... I mean, you've seen yourself, right? Lack of facial hair grooming complete with neck beard, the loose-fitting, unbuttoned flannel, messy collar, furry-themed t-shirt... I'm not saying you're wrong, and I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm just saying that if we are talking about why people have perceptions of furries the way that they do, maybe, just maybe, that could potentially be one of the reasons that would lead them to that conclusion. And yet on the other poll, we've recently had a slew of wonderful publicity about our charity work and, you know, how much we boost the economy in loads of towns where our cons are. Game is on. Whoa there. Hold your horses. And don't, you know, actually just, uh, just keep your hands away from the horses, please. So, I guess we're just passing out points casually, pluses and minuses. All right. Fair enough. Odd though. But we will roll with it. A minus one for the reputation society gives furries for... Zoophilia and bestiality, and a plus one because sometimes they do some charity. I don't know, it seems like it's a little lopsided to me. I could draw a parallel with a Catholic church. Sure, it seems that there's rampant pederasty that's being covered up by those in charge and excused, but hey, they do charity work. While I don't have any doubts in my mind that furry conventions and such do positive things for their communities through charitable contributions, and I mean that, I don't doubt it for a second, the perception that furries have in society 
is that they're degenerate, immature sex fiends. It's not necessarily justified. In fact, by and large, I don't think it's justified. But that's what it is. Nobody looks at furries and sees a beacon of altruistic charity. What people see are websites upon websites dedicated to lewd, sexualized artwork and people dressed up in costumes. That's what people see. That's what comes to mind first. That takes precedent over anything that's done in the background. Scandal that takes place within the furry fandom and the sexual aspects of it are very obvious. Same with the fursuit thing. That's what people see. It's odd and it's unusual. That's what takes precedent before any of the stuff that goes on within the community. Because people don't see that nearly as easily or give it as much weight if they're looking from the outside in. I don't think there's anything wrong with going to your convention, dressing up in your fursuits, meeting people, and him hauling around and talking about whatever you want to do. That's fine. I think that's all harmless fun. I would say that in the defense of furries, and something you probably should have put in your video, was that the community response to Kiro the Wolf was, for the most part, extremely negative. There's an element of policing that takes place within every community. People can do things that will essentially get them ostracized. The problem we see here is that there's trends. Now, as for boosting the economy where your conventions are held, well, I'm actually in the fortunate position of having first-hand experience with this very same issue. Before I became a YouTube doggo, I worked in hotels and restaurants in the service industry. Turns out, even a dog like me can get a job pretty much anywhere if you're charismatic and handsome. And the hotel that I worked at was attached to a convention center. The hotel itself had a wide variety of ballrooms and large meeting spaces and other similar places meant specifically for large groups of people showing up for conventions and events like weddings, business conventions, things like that. Every single group that showed up at the hotel had to pay, obviously, but we're talking about perception of these groups here. I dealt with groups from a variety of angles, from the hotel's lobby restaurant to bartending to banquet serving and valet. I saw sometimes the exact same repeat groups who would come every year for their annual events. And I'm going to let you know, some of these groups, the people in the hotel, we despised them. The people who work in the hotel, they're just that. They're people. And some of the groups that we had were extremely rude, impatient, demanding, inconsiderate, and some groups were really weird. We had an anime convention a few times, and a bunch of furries showed up every time. And my coworkers were really weirded out by them. Like, they were really creeped out, is a good way to describe it. It doesn't matter that you paid to be there. That's like the bare minimum that's expected of you in a society is that you pay money for the services that you want. My coworkers didn't go, ah oh, yes, what a respectable group of mascot enthusiasts who are able to spend money for goods and services. They were all like, that shit's weird. And it is, it is strange. When a furry goes someplace and spends money, people aren't like, oh wow, this furry's a productive member of society. They go, look at this weird guy in my store. Gamers, on the other hand, are often branded as Mountain Dew drinking, Dorito eating, chronic masturbators clamoring for their next batch of 4K cleavage that they're willing to dump thousands of dollars into loot crates to obtain. Um, drinking Mountain Dew and eating Doritos, those are normal things though. Everybody does that. It's not part of a negative reputation to drink soda and eat chips. Alright, next up we have chronic masturbators. Is that a reputation gamers have? That they're chronic masturbators? I haven't heard that one before, honestly, so I went around to a couple discords and asked if people had heard of this, and no one seems to have. I mean, maybe it's possible that none of us are aware of this reputation gamers have, but, um, well, we all seem to have missed it. So I'm gonna chalk that down as a no. After that, clamoring for their next batch of 4K cleavage that they're willing to dump thousands of dollars into loot crates to obtain. And that's his grammar, not mine. I, I guess what you mean is that gamers want to see hot women in their games, which I, I think we do. I think, I think most men do, and I think most women do as well. Yeah, yeah, I know there are some weirdo SJW types out there who think that showing attractive people in media is um, offensive or something because some people are fat and it's easier to tell other people not to be healthy than it is for them to lose weight themselves or it's 
offensive to imply in media you shouldn't be obese these days or something. I don't fucking know. Pretty normal there, though. I have no idea what this has to do with loot crates, though. I assume you mean loot boxes? I guess the reputation gamers have is that they can spend far too much money on loot boxes in order to get an in-game prize? Which, sure, they do sometimes, yeah. Uh, still, I still don't know what this has to do with boobs, though. And I'm a doggo who loves his boobies. But, in any event, if we're making comparisons, I think it would be odd to mention that gamers can spend too much on their hobbies when you're wearing a fursuit in this video. Good fursuits are expensive. Trawling around Reddit threads and other places on the internet, I found a lot of people talking about their fursuits or how expensive they are. I find a lot of people talking about how easily into thousands of dollars they could cost. And also, now maybe this is just me, but I can't help but feel like even if all of that was the reputation that gamers had, there's this little part of me that, that just has to point out Wanting to see titties and buying loot boxes doesn't come anywhere close to zoophilia and bestiality. And remember, we can't forget that we're comparing a much more niche, 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 niche kind of interest, furries, to a much more predominantly open and societally normal hobby, like video games. I mean, depending on how you want to define gamer, which I assume for this video is what I'd consider a gamer, Somebody who doesn't just exclusively play on mobile devices. Somebody who makes time for their hobby or plays it when they can regularly enough. I mean, the Entertainment Software Association, back in 2015, said that half the country plays video games and that four out of five American households own a device used to play video games. In 2018, according to a study released by Electronic Entertainment Design and Research, 67% of Americans play video games on at least one type of device, most of those being uh, phones. 90% of those play their games on smartphones or tablets. Uh, personal computers, they were the second most popular platform, and then consoles and then handheld systems after that. I'll leave links here to the studies that I looked at because there's a lot of interesting info there, but no matter how you want to slice it up, gaming is far, far, far more popular than the furry fandom. Everybody either plays video games or knows about video games. Non-gamers see the ads for them on TV, they see them in the electronic sections at stores, they see the ads on the internet, they see the memes, they absorb it through the popular culture. Let's put it this way, let's say you walked into somebody's house and beneath the TV there was an Xbox. Well, that wouldn't even raise a brow, that's normal, there's nothing unusual about that. In fact, you may not even notice it at all because it's such a common item in households. Now, let's say you walked into somebody's house, and you saw what Artemis' room looks like. Yeah, um, you might have a couple questions. Or, maybe you'll just walk away slowly. I don't know, either way, raises a brow. That's why I keep my massive collection of furry-themed dildos hidden away from prying eyes. So giving each group the same amount of negative reputation, this doesn't sound fair at all. Especially, since most of the things you listed were just normal people things or not even the reputation at all. There really aren't a lot of positives uh, in terms of what society views gamers as, which is actually kind of a bad thing. I don't know, I think that gaming in society is such a prevalent hobby and cultural force now that it's probably even more accurate to say that gamers are the society and you can't really separate the two because of how big the groups are. It's like asking uh, what does society think about religion or what do men think of women? But it's just important to note here that apparently furries have a big green plus one for reputation in society, and gamers don't have any. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sure you're all very curious. With the media blaming video games for all things such as millennial laziness and school shootings. Because obviously it's down to GTA that kids are getting shot in schools and not a complete lack of gun control reform. Hashtag thoughts and prayers. And when those articles come out that video games cause violence, they're almost universally castigated and denounced. Maybe back in Jack Thompson's days, in the satanic panic days, you had a better chance of the media putting out stuff like that and not being roundly denounced. I mean, you can see what happens to the new age Jack Thompsons today. But you seem to think it's because we need more gun reform. Well, I am happy to hear suggestions. I'm all ears. Tell me, propose legislation. What are you thinking? What rules need to be changed? What rules need to be taken away? What rules need to be added? Tell me, because just throwing out into the ether, oh, we need gun reform. 
Well, that doesn't help. What do you want to do? I am certain that you are intimately familiar with gun laws in the United States. I mean, let's take me. I own 18 firearms myself, from AR-15s to AK-74s to Mosin Nagants, and hey, I carry a handgun with me pretty much anywhere I go. In fact, I've even taken Arkansas's enhanced concealed carry license class and had to take as part of that active shooter training. I'm registered, and I'm in the books, a law-abiding doggo who responsibly exercises his Second Amendment rights. So, please, do tell us what rules you think should be changed to protect the children in those, well, gun-free zones. I am all ears. Tell us what privileges should be stripped of law-abiding citizens so that criminals who are notoriously famous for following the law won't do bad things. They definitely won't just switch to using knives and acid and poison and explosives or, hell, just driving trucks down the sidewalk. Now, it's the guns that are the issue. Never mind the statistics of self-defense and crime. Never mind the already incredibly long list of things already illegal, banned, and restricted in the books. Nah. Obviously, it's gun control. That'll save all of those children. It can't be mental health issues, it can't be prescriptions or drug use, it can't be the culture, it can't be fatherlessness, no, no, it's definitely the guns. In fact, I've got almost 20 guns of my own sitting securely in their safe spaces and hidey holes, and oddly, not a single one of them has shot a child yet. Uh, it must be broken or something. So, please, Artemis, please tell me, which laws are the ones that failed? Tell me what needs to to be reformed. Go on, European. Tell me more about how Americans have freedoms that you don't like. Might be better if you focused on the problems in your own country, like the fact that you live in a place where they will send people to jail for tweets and expel students for saying there's only two genders. Yeah, to be fair, that's a pretty harsh reputation that the gamers have had to shake off. Wait, I guess we're back down to one minus for gamers? Despite the fact that it's a huge money-making business that this art form has turned into, even if there are a very small select few in the minority of the uh, community that kind of earn it. Yeah, see, that's uh, an awful big rock to be throwing in such a giant glass house there, dog. You sure you really want certain names bubbling back up to the top of the fandom? No, 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 let's just move the fuck on. Man, I'm sure you'll eventually get to a positive for gamers, I guess. I mean, you gave the furries one. Put my words, bite me in the ass, again. Ah, oh, um, alrighty then. I guess that section's over. Just a short recap, it seems that furries have scored a point for positive reputation in society, and people who play video games have not. That's insane. But hey, let's just be consistent here. Earlier in the video, when you were making your positive point for furries, you showed two of them holding up a piece of cardboard that said 19,307 euros. That's nice. Very good. Uh-huh. But, do not you think that it would be a little inconsistent of you to not give a positive point to gamers for doing the same thing, especially considering they do way more charity work than furries do. In fact, it's probably not even close to being close. It's not really the point, though. It's not a contest about who gives who. The fact that both give is good. But, look, you've got the Extra Life charity for gamers. That's raised 50 million since it began in 2008. You got the St. Jude's Play Live, where once in a single 24-hour live stream for the charity, streamer Dr. Lupo raised $611,000. And you can't mention gamer charities without pointing out, of course, games done quick. Charity work for GDQ now regularly surpasses the millions for donations for all kinds of charities like the Prevent Cancer Foundation and Doctors Without Borders. And what about Humble Bundle, through which I purchased the very software this video was made with? As of June 2019, the total amount raised for charity through their sales has exceeded $150 million across 50 different charities. And of course, there's plenty more that I haven't mentioned too, but the point is, if you're going to give furries points for charity work recognized, then not giving the same point, or many, many more, to the gamers, that's ludicrous. Oh, and just so we're clear, I'm not bashing furries in any way for this. It's legitimately a good thing that they do charity work. 
The point here isn't about amounts, it's about consistency. Well, shit, I think we've kind of lost this round already. I mean, the internet seems to really fucking hate furries. No, nah, it ain't just the internet. With furry hate being mm. tossed around more than your mum when the Navy comes to town. I live in Arkansas, and, um, the Navy doesn't visit much. Well, you wouldn't be the only one. The same kind of reputation is attributed to gamers as well. What? You ever wonder just what universe these people live in? What parallel dimension they have slipped into our reality from? These people are interstellar galactic visitors who have crash landed upon our planet, who have no idea about modern culture. I just, I can't imagine saying something that monumentally stupid. That gamers have the same negative reputation online that furries do. I mean, we could, we could do a test. Just go hop onto any random Discord channel, hop onto any server anywhere online and say, I play video games, and then just measure the response and see what happens. Now do the same thing, except say, hey guys, I'm a furry, and then see what the reaction is. I'm, I'm certain they will be exactly the same. There will be no difference between the two. Or being ridiculed for enjoying something so apparently childish by people who wouldn't know happiness if it crept up their colon and nestled lovingly next to their prostate gland. You know, maybe years and years ago, that was the case. Maybe. But gaming is such a mainstream and popular hobby now that the idea gaming's childish? I think it's a much less prevalent opinion than it was before. Especially when you consider that the average gamer in the US is between 32 and 35, depends on the study you see, and 75% of Americans have at least one gamer in the household. Now, gaming's far, far too mainstream and commonplace now to have anything comparable to the negative reputation furries have. I mean, I'd love to see the statistics. What percentage of American households have a furry in it? I will be totally honest though, and a lot of the hatred towards furries does come from these self-professed gamers because... Because gamers are extremely prevalent on the internet, and furries do really cringy shit on the internet, and that info spreads, because it's the internet. Apparently, jokes about fucking your mum got old back in 2009. No, uh, gamers still tell mom jokes, they're just not all as crappy as yours was. And hating on furries is the latest hot trend. Yeah, I think this one's got a bit of staying power. Have you actually, like, listened to what furries say on the internet? If you let your cat roam unsupervised, they're not your cat. As soon as they're outside unattended, they're a stray. And you bet your ass I will take them and find them better homes where they'll be kept safe and healthy. Don't want me to steal your cat? And, and steals in quotes, because definitely not stealing. Keep it the fuck inside. This post brought to you by me stalking a neighborhood cat who is slowly starting to try- I can't even do the voice anymore. I don't know if they're a stray or an outdoor cat, but they're going to be in my house as soon as they let me get my hands on them. Holy fuck, this guy's going around stealing people's pets. God, why do people hate furries? In sodomy-based satire. We do a decent amount to remedy our own bad reputation. <laughs> no, 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 no. Even if, sometimes, just like the song, we honestly don't give a damn about it. But that's not to say that we don't always deserve it. I mean, hell, just look at one of the recent drama events happening on fucking Twitter or <clears throat> YouTube, and it's easy to see why the internet has such a skewed opinion of us. No, no, yeah, I agree. I, I encourage everybody who watches this video, just delve into furry Twitter for five minutes. You'll hate furries, I promise. I mean, hell, just the mention of a H2 podcast and suddenly we're starting fires in the metaphorical streets. No, H3, but uh, you're aware of it, at least, so you can understand why furries have such a negative reputation. They're always trying to claw each other down. They are actively going out of their way to sabotage their own good PR. This one's difficult. <laughs> is it is it difficult? I mean, we vary so massively in what we're like online that it's really hard to nail down exactly what we're like. So, I mean, we got people like uh, Uncle Kage and Boozy Badger who are totally sane, reasonable, rational, mature adults living a proper professional life. Jeez, calm down. No need to set the bar so high for furries. Hey, did you know that some of us are even normal? See, I gave us a point because some of us are normal. 
But then we also have those egocentric, popularity hunting mega cunts who are so desperately trying to get back that attention they were clearly starved of during their childhood. Well, if we're psychoanalyzing people, uh, maybe you're projecting. And that's not even mentioning all of the, oh, well, what's this, nuzzles you fucking not bullshit that floods the message request file of anyone with even a hundred followers on Twitter. Honestly, despite the decent amount of decent people, I think the- What? Motherfucker, you just gave yourself two points for the same damn thing. You can't give yourself a point for amazing people and then a moment later say, oh yeah, also we get a point for having mostly decent people. You know, there's a lot of people out there who think you guys rape animals. So saying, yeah, there's some normal people amongst us, also we're mostly decent. I don't know if that really weighs itself against the negative of zoophilia. Oh, play hungry, basic first, drag us down enough that we should probably just forfeit this category altogether. Well, I mean, you didn't give up on the last two categories, and that was baffling. Well, that's not to say that you are entirely alone there. There are the odd few gamers, in fact, quite a lot of gamers who have achieved massive fame over on YouTube and even a couple that have transitioned into the mainstream. Just for the record, first positive point for gamers so far. There might be the odd anti-Semitic quote here and there, but fuck it. The subscriber counts are high enough that we can just brush that under the rug and hush it up with just one or two fake cry apology videos. Ooh, all right. Deep breath, Rags. Deep breaths. You can do this. You've dealt with the morally bankrupt dregs of the internet's most stupid denizens before, and you can do it again. All right. This is gonna be a long one, lovely puppies, so strap on. In! Strap in. Strap in. In. Strap in, and we'll walk through this one, one point at a time. PewDiePie is an amazing guy. Since he began his current channel in 2010, and he had his previous one in 2006, he's been able to raise millions of dollars, as well as given himself to charities around the world. Whether it's been charities to provide drinking water to those without it, providing emergency medical care to children in times of disaster, giving money for age relief, or assisting with suicide prevention, he is responsible for the mobilization of incredible amounts of good done for the world, both at home and abroad. PewDiePie, though, is an entertainer. He tells jokes, he makes silly videos, and he uses his platform to make the world a far, far better place in very meaningful ways for many people. But then there's people like you, Artemis. Then there's people like you. You know the type, the moral busybodies, the holier-than-thou dictators of what jokes we can and cannot tell, the arbiters of humor itself. Thank goodness, Artemis, we have fat, unkempt slobs like you who proclaim to far, far better people than themselves that they should be canceled and done away with. So sorry, kids in Africa who have drinking water now, Artemis Wishfoot didn't like one of PewDiePie's jokes. Sorry people with AIDS, some angry furry on the internet thinks that jokes are far more important. So we've given a negative point to gamers because PewDiePie's fans still support him because he told a joke you didn't like. Holy shit, what a little bitch. Can you imagine the idea, the nerve, of millions upon millions of people that they still support a content creator who's brought them uncountable amounts of joy, who have brought so much incredible relief to the world through his charity. Can you believe that they didn't just dump him and walk away forever because of a joke? Can you imagine a world where people don't try and ruin people's lives over a joke that some people found offensive? Oh, my God, what a terrible world. PewDiePie should be banned, canceled, unpersoned. Sorry, all you 98 million subscribers who watch his content. You see, if you still support PewDiePie after he told a joke Artemis found offensive, you're doing something bad. After all, that's why we gave that little minus point to the gamers. I'm so incredibly curious, Artemis, how many of his fans should have left? I mean, if it's bad to still support him, then surely you mean that all of his fans should do the right thing and leave, yeah? I mean, you tell one bad joke and you should lose your platform, lose your audience, hell, be destitute on the streets. So how many people should leave? 10%? 20? 30? Half? A majority of people should leave? And the people who don't leave, I guess... 
They were just uh, bad moral actors. So all of you out there listening to this, if you're a fan of PewDiePie, if you support him, you're doing a bad thing. You're giving gamers a bad reputation. Artemis says so. But hey, let's be consistent here. George Carlin? What a terrible person. Can you believe people laughed at his offensive jokes? Can you believe people supported him? Bought tickets to go and see him? And Norm MacDonald? Ricky Gervais? Jimmy Carr? God, the list goes on and on of comedians who said jokes that some people found offensive. It's probably every comedian ever. Tell us, Artemis, who are you not allowed to joke about? Who can't you make fun of? Who are the protected classes in society? Who can't you mock and parody? Enlighten us, O oh master of all humor, for we seek your guidance. We wouldn't want to make a joke about the wrong things, after all. Could you imagine the horror of a world where people tell jokes about, God, whatever they wanted? Oh, a fun fact. After PewDiePie did that particular joke that Artemis finds so offensive and egregious, because you aren't allowed to joke about Jews, you see. PewDiePie donated money so the people who carried out that joke on the Fiverr website could start up their own website since Fiverr banned their accounts. PewDiePie even requested that they unban them since it wasn't their fault, but his. God, what a terrible person, Artemis. What a, what a terrible, horrible person PewDiePie is. And everyone who still supports him, you should be ashamed. Let this point not go understated. Artemis Wishfoot is saying that it is a bad thing for people to still support PewDiePie because he told a joke that Artemis found offensive. These are the kinds of people who want to morally judge you based on the jokes that you tell. And they want to judge you, morally judge you, because you didn't find it offensive and because you still support PewDiePie, regardless of what good he does or what he does for you. Oh, but lovely viewers, we are not done yet. No, no. You see, Artemis says that PewDiePie made one or two fake cry apology videos. Hmm. See, the thing is, with an apology, what can make it truly sincere is taking action to, in some way, remedy any harm or perceived harm that occurred because of what you did. Now, I say the only reason there was any harm, and I have that in strong quotations because all that happened was sensitive moral busybodies on the internet just had their feelings hurt, the only reason that any of that happened at all was because of the continual character assassination and hit pieces that are made about PewDiePie in article form or from people just like Artemis about how, how he's alt-right or a Nazi or how he's racist or hates Jews or something. He told the wrong joke. The old media hates the new media, after all. PewDiePie said he was sorry, said he didn't think they'd actually do it, didn't mean to offend people, he just wanted to make people laugh. He even used his own money to do what he could to correct what happened as a result. But you see, I mean, hell, how often do we hear it? It's like, it's like a broken record repeated all the time. What do we hear? I believe anecdotally from what I've seen, when you apologize for some wrongdoing to the PC outrage mob, you are giving them evidence you did something wrong and you know it. They then take it and see, aha, and they still go after you. There is no apology. And that is a nightmare. Okay. This is a terrible world to live in. We should be able to live in the world, a, a world where you can say, hey man, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I feel bad and I'm sorry. And then people should say, hey, spot on, because you apologize, we can move on. It doesn't work that way. Indeed, it doesn't. We've seen it time and time again. Never apologize to these people. They're out for blood. These people are sharks circling in the water just waiting for you to fuck up. After all, even when you do apologize, it won't be accepted. Your apology is never enough. You won't satisfy these people. These people want to watch you fail for the sake of their outrage. That's what's important. You know, this reminds me of an old saying. Well, it, it's not an old saying. I made it up rather recently, actually. But it goes, give a furry enough tweets and he'll hang himself with them. Person made a mistake, person acknowledged that mistake, person explained what led to that mistake and explained the perspective, person outlined a way to fix that mistake and prevent it happening again. 
time to allow them to grow and develop. They've done this right. I spent a lot of my time being like this until I finally realized the effect a harmless joke can have on people. Oh, do, do tell me, Artemis, what, what effect does it have on people? Now, I'm constantly shutting my mouth and watching my words because the intent was never to hurt, but sometimes it does anyway. Be respectful, people. It's not hard. I don't know. It sounds fairly hard to me. After all, you are constantly shutting your mouth and watching your words. Constantly wanting to say something. Constantly wanting to express yourself. But constantly having to stop being able to express yourself because somebody out there might be offended by a harmless joke. You might decide to live in this kind of world, but it's not the kind of world that you should want to stress others live as well. But hey, PewDiePie said a joke and I didn't like it. Nyeh. Should be cancelled. People shouldn't support him. Should be destitute on the streets. Four days later, pro tip! If someone expects you to apologize for you being open and honest with them, then chances are they aren't the sort of person you should be around. Things are so much better when you can trust people and their reactions. Four day difference. And you know, fair enough Artemis, if you want to skirt the line between both of those worlds and live somewhere in the nebulous middle ground between them, that's on you. Though, I do have a question. You ever feel like some people are just professionally offended? Their content is so vapid and empty that all they really do is overreact to trivial shit they see online and hope that makes up for a lack of originality? I mean, I'm not talking about any one person specifically, but fuck. Actually, shit, now you mention anti-Semitism, we kind of have to mention the whole Nazi fur bullshit we've had bubbling away <laughs> under the surface all these years. Why not? What, what's wrong with expressing yourself? I thought that's what furries were all about, expressing yourself. And hey, the Nazis were snazzy dressers. Do you actually think that they're followers of Nazi ideology? Do you? Or do you think that a lot of them just get off on people like you who get all bothered about it? I'm gonna guess it's the latter. But, you know, we're talking about reputation. But then again, the only reason people would even know about Nazi furries is if you guys were constantly putting them in the spotlight and making notes about them and showing the world, oh, Nazi furries, get out. Oh yes, I know it's a very bold statement to wear a pin that says Nazi furs fuck off. That's very, it's very, very bold of you. That's, wow, it must take an immense amount of courage to say that you don't like Nazis. Goodness gracious. You know, and that whole fucking weirdly prejudiced subset of the fandom that we have. Indeed, indeed, very prejudiced. I mean, think of all of the furries out there who have refused to do artwork for me because I have been accused of being racist or transphobic or something, even though the artist who draws the images you're seeing now, she's not white, but whatever, I guess the truth is inconvenient, isn't it? It is a funny thing, they can never actually give me any examples, but that's what they've heard, so hey, that's a very prejudiced thing to do, spreading lies about people's assumed bigotry, right? Think of all of the furries out there who label others as Nazis and bigots when they aren't. That's a fairly prejudiced thing to do. And you know, what's even worse than that, all the furries out there who advocate for violence against other people. That must be one of the most prejudiced things that anyone could say. Wouldn't you agree, Artemis? Wouldn't it just be horrible to say that you rather enjoy the concept of assaulting people who you have deemed to have the wrong opinions? I mean, what kind of a horrible prejudiced authoritarian would advocate for something so openly and so boldly? On the face of their virtue. As a responder to a video, I have the luxury of a hindsight that Artemis did not have at the time. Although that is no excuse at all, not in the slightest. He should know better, because we've been telling his ilk, you could say, the exact same thing over and over and over ad nauseum. Maybe it's not a good idea to advocate for violence against other people just based on their opinions. Maybe in a civilized society, the advocation for violence is a bad idea because it never stops there. It always progresses. And we've seen this. 
What? Are, are, were you so stupid, Artemis, that you thought it would stop at milkshakes? I don't know, maybe you are that stupid. When you go out and tell people who have a apparent love for violence that it's okay to enact violence, what kind of a message does that send? What kind of an endorsement is that, Artemis? Do you think it takes a brain surgeon and a rocket scientist's genius prodigy baby to maybe consider that eh, this, this won't lead anywhere good, will it? One thing I find so interesting is that the people like me, for instance, who pretty much carry a firearm with them wherever they go, who at any point have access to lethal and deadly force, it, it just, it's just something I've noticed. But it seems that people like me, very pro-Second Amendment, very pro-gun, are the people who tend to be extremely hesitant to actually use that force on other people unless it's absolutely necessary. It's always the pro-gun right and the advocates for self-defense with firearms who tend to be the ones who have a grasp of the scope and scale and the consequences of that potential violence. And those who want to take those guns away, who want to restrict that ability, they do seem to be the ones, again, just as an observation, they do seem to be the ones who are the ones saying, yeah, enact violence against those whose opinions you disagree with. Just an observation. You know, for people who like to dress up as cute, fluffy animals, we sure do attract a lot of fucking politically-minded, bigoted assholes. Yeah, could you believe that? I wonder who those people are. Let me guess, it's all those Nazis out there, hiding in the shadows. I mean, there's not much need for a witch hunter if there aren't any witches, right? Yeah, and laying all the cards on the table, so do gamers. In fact, some slurs are tossed about as if there isn't a massive history of hatred and bigotry behind them, barring their use in civilized society. The internet isn't civilized society, and thank God it's not. We get enough civilized society every day in our real lives. We have civilized society out there in the real world. Or at least most of the world. Some parts have a bit of catching up to do. Oh, I hope that wasn't too racist. I hope that wasn't too Islamophobic. The internet should be a place where people can be terrible to each other, where people can be kind to each other, where people can be polite and rude and every manner of thing to one another. The internet should be wild and unkempt, with a million different forums and groups and conclaves that set their own rules and who don't have to conform to the moral indignation of authoritarians like yourself. The internet should be a place where offense is eventually guaranteed, where you can be yourself, where you can say the things you want and not have to pander to the people who would castigate you just because you said a naughty word. Within reason, of course, I'm not some ultra-libertarian type. Words, though, they have the meanings and the strength that you give to them. Each individual can choose to be offended by whatever they want. Words are, well, they're what you make of them. If your goal is to steal people's nerves against offense and words, then the last thing you want to do is to let actions of long ago in a history that was not your responsibility to dictate what we are allowed to say and do. It is not good that we should police each other with such moral superiority for fear of the society monster from forever ago, to borrow a phrase from Randomer Cam. Besides, what an incredibly subjective standard. This word has a nasty history, so you can't say it in public in the real world, so you can't say it online as well. Well, offensive to who? To, to you, personally? It doesn't offend me. Does the same thing apply? What if I have my own place and uh, no one in my group is offended by it? What then? Offense is taken. It's not given. After all, it was that desire for a civilized society that your country sends the police to knock on people's doors because they said mean things on Twitter. You get the right people in charge with enough moral justification that anything they do that suits their own, well, I guess you could call it values, is justified. Yeah, you said a mean thing on Twitter. That means we have to send the police to your door to give you a talking to because there are just some things that you shouldn't be allowed to say because some people might be offended by them. And the state should be the ones to determine what those things are. 
It's the natural result of coddling and the presumption of moral superiority to control others without justification. These people want to control through offense and indignation the things you can and cannot do. I don't care if a word has a history, because every word has a history, because all words are made up. I don't give a shit. I just, I couldn't care any less. So grow the fuck up. Stop whinging. Stop whining. Nee. Someone on the internet said a potty word. Cry me a river. If you don't like it, then don't watch it. Don't dictate to others what they should and shouldn't do. Especially because we know through your own words that uh, you rather like the idea that people should get assaulted in public if they have opinions you don't like. But, hell, fuck it. If it helps you put that 12-year-old who just no-scoped you in their place, then it's worth it, right? I mean... Worth it? I mean, it doesn't cost anything. What do you mean? It's not racism if it's just trolling for views, right? Well, obviously this is very context-dependent, but generally, no, I don't think so. I mean, generally, if you are trolling for views, then you're not doing it in order to discriminate against a race, you're doing it to troll for views. You just recognize that, like most normal people, that racism is a bad in society, and that's what gives it its edginess, and therefore its humor. That's why racist jokes will always exist, and why every race will be telling them. They're funny. And telling a joke to make people laugh obviously doesn't mean you actually mean something like that in your heart. You just want to give people a giggle for a moment. Now, obviously, there may be scenarios where people are actually racist and use that for content, no doubt. But generally, people just use the fact that racism is just an unspoken bad thing to give their content edginess. Which is why black people will often make fun of black people, and white people often make fun of white people, and crisscross in every way. When a black comedian or content producer makes fun of white people, I don't think that he's actually a racist. Same goes for if a white comedian makes black jokes. I don't actually think in his heart of hearts he hates blacks. It's just silly fun and very few people actually take those jokes like they're serious. Or that poking fun at stereotypes is anything substantive. We get it, Artemis. Jokes about race offend you. Lord knows what you want to do about it. Ban the comedians? Ban the jokes? Throw shit at them in public? I don't know. I'm sure your solution is a doozy. I can imagine a comedy club and everyone inside is all laughing, all the races, both the genders, everybody from everywhere is just having a good time, they're laughing, they're poking fun at each other, it's great. And then you hear them laughing from the street, and so you burst in from the sidewalk and you go, oh no, 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 you gotta shut all this down, that's offensive. You can't be telling these racist, sexist jokes, this bigotry is unacceptable, shut it down. That's you, the guy on the street? That's you, Artemis. You're that guy. I have listened to black comedians, and they've told jokes about white people, and it was fucking hysterical. Hilarious. I laughed my ass off. I guess, does that, am I a bad person? Should I not, should I not be doing that? Well, mea maxima culpa. Hands down, we win this fucking category, alright? I mean, just look at us. We are cute, fluffy, and adorable. I am certain you believe that. I think you look creepy. Most people think you look creepy. Lovingly and artistically created to express all of the amazing aesthetic sides of life that simple fleshy bastards could never hope to achieve. Aha. Uh -huh. So, you gave yourself points for being cute, which, um, is contentious created by passionate artists, and a form of expression. All right, uh, suppose that's fair enough. Though, gotta, gotta say, if you don't give the same points to video games, because they deserve it too, if not even more, then I might have to say something. Especially because twas you, after all, who said, I finished Arthur's storyline in Red Dead 2 today, and yes, there were tears truly a beautiful work of art. Ignore the derp suits and all the old photos that are thrown at us just to discourage us. The sheer amount of artistic freedom and creativity that we have within our fucking community is mind-blowing. You kind of already, like, gave yourself points for this, like, two other times, but, you know, so whatever, I guess, you know, fuck it. 
and should be celebrated and therefore means we should win this category without any argument. Well, that is kind of true. And while, you know, gamers as a community do have some sort of aesthetic, it largely resembles a music visualizer that was pre-installed on the PS2. Well, um, I don't know what planet you're living on, but for the rest of us, even if we were to limit ourselves arbitrarily to only the aesthetics of PC gaming, then I doubt there would be any kind of configuration you couldn't find. And I should know, that's how I got started on YouTube, PC versus console videos. Every color, every type, every material, every glow, every light, every tiny component, all put together to create practically anything that your mind could imagine. Putting parts and technical aspects to the side, the aesthetic components of a potential custom PC build, you will never exhaust your possibilities. And Artemis, darling, I can't help but notice that the super dope picture that you chose to say there's a limited aesthetic to gaming as a community, couldn't help but notice that there was a whole bunch of stickers and pictures on the wall. And I know that you would never use this as a terrible example of aesthetic, having a bunch of pictures on the wall, when, when, um, when your room is covered in stickers and pictures on the wall. Or, you know, maybe you don't like it because there's a big old Pepe on the wall and a Kekistan flag. My goodness, will the oppression of all ethnic Kekistanis never cease? Disgusting, Artemis. I never expected this kind of racism from you of all people. And while game design itself is just as amazing and varied as anything else in the world, the community itself doesn't really break down the doors of creativity in terms of what they look like. In fact, gentle reminder that you look like this. A lot of them do kind of adhere to the stereotype, sadly. You say sadly, but what stereotype are you talking to? It's such a massive and broad demographic, I don't actually know what part of the supposed stereotype you're referring to. Not to say they all do, obviously, because I'm being fair, but comic book guy came from somewhere for fuck's sake and just evolved into gamers, really. Yeah, people don't actually think that the average video game player looks like this stereotype, but you know who kind of does look like him? Maybe a little bit of foresight helps just a teensy weensy bit if we're talking about stereotypical appearances. And what about cosplayers? All the people out there who dedicate so much time and effort and work and using their ability in order to dress up as characters. Do they just not even get a mention here? Not even a little wink or a nudge? Nothing? And it's clear you're not going to give the same bonuses to the people who make and create video games that you're giving to... furries. Despite the fact that the video game industry is literally more profitable than Hollywood. Think of all the man hours, just the sheer time it takes in the creative process in order to make that happen. Obviously, because I'm being fair. Once again, we are well ahead of the curve in terms of variety of activity, I mean... Alright, this category is kind of an odd one. I... Don't, I so, furry isn't an activity, it's a general interest from which many, many activities can be underneath the umbrella of. Gamer is centered specifically around the playing of video games, which is an activity, a singular activity. Why would you make, why would you make this a category? We got loads of shit, we got fursuiting, fursuit making. So I guess a relevant counter on the gamer side would be making and playing video games, which is a distinction. Porn. Well, there's tons of video game character porn, rule 34 and all that stuff. And what if the video game character is a furry? Like Daddy Cass, mmm. And of course we can't forget all those not safe for work cosplays, mmm, a valuable service to humanity they provide. Uh, we've got digital art, traditional art, uh, drawing porn, we've- Alright, I, I think we've just abandoned all pretense of trying to be fair. What the fuck is it with you and the bottom of feet? Is that like your fetish or something? Is it all feet? Or is it just like, furry feet? I'm not gonna beat you down over it, I mean, I've got weird fetishes too, we all do. It's just like, it's just odd, I don't see what's sexual about it. For instance, um, I like pregnant chicks, I think they're super hot. But pregnancy has a very clear relationship to sexual intercourse, you know? 
Yeah, I don't know. Fuck it. Tell me in the comments why you like feet or something. Mm. Got uh, making videos, uh, making films, uh, filming porn. We've got uh, photography. We've got writing. We've got writing porn, and we've got taking pictures of porn. Yeah, all this applies to games too, of course. What is that? Claw Sand Starships. It's an odd name for a book. After watching the video, I I think I think we're wrong about the title. I think it's actually kids and airbags. Oh. oh. Yeah. I, I mean, I got suspicious because there was no sand. And actually, did I mention the porn? Because holy shit, that is actually quite a big money-making business here, and also just as varied as the rest. I mean, Jesus, we're practically swimming in porn. Actually, no, not literally. That's probably some weird niche fetish that's out there somewhere already. Okay, this one isn't actually all that fair to gamers because gamers are based around one single hobby. That is its purpose. That is what people are attracted to. And there are fandoms and there are things that you like about it, but ultimately it is the pursuit of playing a video game. Whereas the furry community is a fucking umbrella covering all of this other shit. So, perfectly honest, this just feels like it's been stacked against us. Why the fuck did you put it in your video? You're, you're the one who chose to make this a category. What do you mean you don't know why it's here? You put it there. On this one, okay? And furries are obviously gonna fucking win. And rightly so. I mean, across all of the cons and Instagram pages and YouTube channels that we have, the gamers could just never hope to be as varied as us, for God's sake. I mean, this is just easy points at the end of the day. It's weird that you would think that this is a slam dunk for furries, I guess, that it's just free points that you'd win. But really, when you actually think about it, there are equivalents to all of those things on the gamer sides. And when it comes to sheer scale, they probably dwarf their furry counterparts. What did you say? Uh, conventions, Instagram pages, YouTube channels... Gaming as a genre on YouTube is massive. YouTube even has a YouTube gaming to it. It has 83 million people subscribed to it. There's PAX and BlizzCon and E3 and all the other technology and gaming related conferences. Social media accounts that are gaming related. I mean, there's so many of those, they're practically self-evident, or at least they should be. When you add up the cosplayers and then the Let's Plays and tutorials and, I mean, dear God, think of all the streamers and people who watch video game streamers. Think about the modders and community content guys. They, the developers and all of, man, like, really? Should this be free points for furries? And finally, we got the big one, the toxicity of the furry fandom. And that's something that's always up for debate, with some people wanting to sit there saying that it's just a few select individuals that drag us down. Obviously, depending on who you ask, results will vary, but I can't really think of a more toxic community than furries, except maybe SJWs. I mean, after all, they're the group you have to worry about because they'll do things like call your employer to get you fired, oftentimes because you had an opinion they didn't like on social media. They'll demonize you and try to ruin your life with false accusations of rape or sexual assault. Even if there's absolutely no evidence and in fact contradictory claims made against you. Because SJWs aren't so hot on the idea of due process or the principle that people are innocent until you prove them guilty of something. As we all know, SJWs will try to take away your livelihood. They will try to stop you from getting a job. They will slander you. They will take away your podcast. They'll take away your YouTube channel, your TV show. They'll do what they can to ruin you, and they'll gloat about how virtuous and wonderful they are when they do. Hell, they'll try to, as we've established previously, get you expelled from school because you just say you think there's only two genders. And the SJW and furry crossover? Pretty substantial, at least that's how it seems. Have you been on Twitter lately? Mr. Violence Against Politicians is a great idea. If we compare the reputation that furries and SJWs have with the reputation Gamer has, I don't think it's even close to being close. That's a reason why I and so many other people have an issue with SJWs. They will ruin people's lives based on accusations that are unproven or allegation of thought crime, which I don't think is a good way to build a society. Whereas others would argue that there are a ton of deep-rooted problems that constantly threaten to rip the entire community apart. 
That's what's weird about your system. Both of those things are weighted the same. I mean, kind of them both right? could be- All right, this is like the third or so time this has happened in a video. I don't know, maybe you don't edit these. Bank, bank, bank. That loud, sudden vocal distortion in the audio that happens when you switch from you in the fursuit to normal you, you without the fursuit? Yeah, you can change that in editing. You, you don't have to keep those in. You could, you could adjust your video so that doesn't happen. He said about gamers, it's hardly a welcoming family and more of a competitive rivalry. You mark that as a negative, but could you explain why? There's not a negative reputation for having a competitive environment. I mean, have you seen normal sports recently? They're kind of a huge deal. And your phrasing of this is really unusual. I, I don't quite understand. Competitive and social are not dichotomous aspects of the same thing. I mean, American football is an excellent example. Is it more competitive or is it more cooperative? Video games, are they more competitive or are they more cooperative, more, more social? You have two teams who have to cooperate to an incredible degree in order to beat the other team. They exist at the same time. And if you look at the different kinds of games, the genres, there's so many single player games where there's nobody out there competing against you or helping you out. And, and there's a lot of games that are casual and cooperative, and even games that are competitive have their own communities. And I think for the most part, gamers are very, very welcoming of people to at least try the hobby. That doesn't mean that they'll be welcoming of everybody to continue existing in a competitive environment that they might just not be cut out to handle. Like every hobby, gaming has a certain exclusivity to it, and just like furries are. I think we would both agree that furries, as a community, shouldn't be inclusive of people who constantly ridicule and hate on the idea of anthropomorphized animals. That would be completely counterintuitive and counterproductive to the point of the fandom. Similarly, if you have a group of people playing a very competitive game, one with a high skill gap for instance, and someone just can't do it? If they can't do it well, if they're not a good team player, uh, for whatever reason, then yeah, they might be pushed away. And pushed away doesn't mean pushed out of gaming, just pushed out of their immediate group in that game. Maybe they need to play at a lower difficulty. Maybe they need to go and practice more with another team. Maybe this game just isn't for them. Maybe they need to try a different genre. Like, I'm not a very big fan of fighting games. I tried them out, they just weren't for me. I didn't like them all that much, I didn't really understand them, they weren't fun. So, I left. But I didn't leave gaming, I just played different games. I think a lot of people really like team-based games because they are that duality of cooperative and competitive. You cooperate with people that you like, your friends and your acquaintances online, but at the same time, you're constantly striving to push yourself further and further and push your friends to get better and better so you can compete on higher levels and do better in the game that you're playing. I, tangent aside, it's not a negative thing to be more competitive than social. Although there are some similarities with families. I mean, you've got the older siblings rating the younger siblings, not being as good as them. And Yes, this encourages the younger siblings to be better and do better in order to get back at the people who are making fun of them. It's one of the reasons I got better, so I could shit talk back, or that I could let my being better do the shit talking for me. There is the constant search for validation that you might never actually achieve, so... Some people, as is natural to people, will seek out validation from others in whatever community they're a part of, be they gamers or furries. I think what is said about one could very much be said about the other. Yeah, actually, in some ways, it's more of a realistic family. Some would call it banter, others could call it bullying. I suppose the only real difference between the two is how much of a fucking pussy you are. Uh, well, yeah, pretty much. I don't know what I'm gonna really add to that. If you can't handle a super competitive environment where people say mean things to you, then yeah, you need to fucking grow up. You need to toughen up. You need to learn this thing. Because if anything, video games are probably the best way to go about this. It's almost like a, like a test chamber for the real world. People out there will confront you. They will say things about you you don't like. They will insult you. You will be in tough situations where maybe your emotions will be tested. 
And video games act as a great sort of, I, I don't know, a training ground to teach you how to steal your nerves and to be true to your convictions or your ideals, to not let people who are too aggressive push you around. In a way, it teaches you to stand up for yourself. What happens if somebody shit talks you in a video game? Well, you shit talk them right back, you just flat out ignore them, or you kick their ass in the video game. I think the super safe but highly competitive environment that video games provide, I think it does young people a really great service. Generally, at least, I'm sure there's always outliers. Some people are just not fit for a competitive environment. And this is how you find out if they are. If not video games, hell, you do sports. Get them started in sports, soccer, basketball, ultimate, anything. Or as it says in my script there, your perspective. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, I don't quite know what point you're trying to make here. We need less people to have the perspective that mean words and online games are actual bullying. We need to have more people with the perspective that they can't get hurt by it, that they're resilient, that they're powerful, that they're independent, that they're strong. Obviously, different people have different perspectives. We don't want people to have the perspective that they are weak. We do certainly have a community that is filled with people that you could easily class as toxic. Some in higher levels and some not. But then again, you try and find me a community in this world that doesn't have people like that in it. You can't. It's fucking impossible. I don't think the contention is that they exist. I think this is about the ratio. Humans are assholes. That's just a fact of life. So finally, taking the negatives and subtracting them from the positives gives you the final scores and I think that gives you at least some indication of exactly which community came out on top. Alright, so not only do furries have a more positive reputation in society than gamers do, it is more positive by a multiple of three. Yeah, um, I don't know, seems a little off to me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Thank you. We're not even going to make a fucking pretense that we tried to do this 100% fair and equal. Well, yeah, we see that now, but you did make a pretense of it. You, at the beginning of the video, you said it yourself. You were there. The words came out of your mouth. Do you not remember? I'll be here to try and give the fairest shape possible to the gamers. Or as fair as uh, I could muster. You can't say we're not going to make a pretense of it after you start off the video by making a pretense of it. That's not how it works because, I mean, look at your host. He's the furriest motherfucker you've ever seen in your life, most likely. And, I mean, just look at the rest of the channel. It's pretty fucking clear which side of the fence we live on. Well, that really shouldn't matter if you're trying to be fair and objective, you know? But that's not to say that we didn't at least try to give the gamers a fair shake. I mean, saying that you actually tried and that's what you came up with, it kind of makes the whole thing worse. We did what we could with what we were given. Even if it wasn't much. Yeah, I mean, we did enough. At least enough to make a video. And at the end of the day, isn't that all that matters? Well, no. I mean, there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, but... Is there, though? Yes! Oh, shit, you're right. Patreon link below. Give me money. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, hilarious. It's not me asking for money, guys. It's my persona. Isn't he silly? This the inner EFAP in me wants to jump out. Because of the writing here, I gotta get really nitpicky. I, I can't help it. This is how I think now. The human you acknowledges that you did enough, at least enough to make a video, and then furry you responds by asking, isn't that all that matters? And then you say, no. But it was you, your human you, who said just a moment before that it was enough. And you posted the video and on everything on your YouTube channel, so it definitely was sufficient that it was at least enough to make a video. I mean, it, I guess, you know, consistency be damned, I suppose. Hey, at least we pumped out enough to make a video. It's a good, it's a good standard, I guess. Well, that's that video. I guess it's time for my final thoughts. No doubt there will be people who say, Rags, why did you respond to this? Can't you see it's only a joke? Well, you don't have to worry about that because my video was a joke too. See? We could play this game all day. Because I think the both of us made what we believe to be legitimate points and commentary in earnest. I don't care about some furries versus gamers thing on the internet. I just do not care. 
that is not why we're here. I just saw somebody's commentary, and I wanted to comment on the commentary, and that's it. I think he was unprincipled, inconsistent. He was not really giving gamers a fair shake. And I know it's the super terrible, horrible thing, but I do generally think that gamers are good guys, and it's a great hobby, and I love the hobby. I don't really consider myself a furry. I don't do anything community-wise. I just jerk to the yard every once in a while. That's about as far as it goes for this doggo. And based on how I've been treated by a lot of furries, and based on what I've seen of furries these uh, last number of years on the internet, I am not exactly going to rush to their defense. But I don't want to be unfair to them either. I understand that there are some good aspects to the furry fandom. I completely, totally understand that it, uh, it could encourage young artists to maybe pursue and hone their craft. It can be a legitimate means of income for many people. It can help... A lot of people make friends, even if those friends might turn on you the moment you have the wrong opinion. But when you compare their reputation that they have earned in the years, especially looking at how many of them act on the internet, and the reputation that they've garnered that's uh, sexual related, and the whole furry convention thing with the uh, animals and the fursuits and stuff, I don't think it's really even close at all that gamers are perceived as a normal, average, everyday thing in society because that's what gaming has become. Now, I do believe, and I mean this, I really do believe it, that most furries are totally normal people who do not do anything negative to society, who aren't bad people, who aren't being a bad influence, who are just normal people enjoying an interest. Doesn't hurt me, doesn't hurt anybody else. I mean, the artist who does my artwork for the channel, she is a sweetheart, and I would defend her against anything. Most furries are absolutely, totally fine people. I firmly believe that. So, Angry Furries on Twitter, you can uh, email me if you have comments, questions, or concerns. If you wish, you can chuck me a bone on Patreon, link below. But, you guys have an excellent rest of your day, and I'll hope to see you soon with a video that I can put out as soon as I can. Toodaloo, boys and girls!